and more of God in our lives. It is good when there is less of us, less of our rules, and more of God and his rules. Hallelujah. What happens when you are at the end of your rope? There is, you get overwhelmed. You get discouraged. You get fearful. You get helpless. When you reach the end of your rope, when you have done all that you know of, when you have gone and sought help on all avenues, you are now at a stage where nothing else ma in the matters. You don't know what to focus on. You want things for yourself. You want things to work out, but you are done with all everything that you can think. You start to worry and you start to lose faith. But this is the time where you need to go back to God. This is the time where you need to invite the Holy Spirit to come and dwell within you, to give you strength to run the race once more. When we look into the word of God, in the book of Genesis uh, chapter 16, we read of a, a story of Sarah, who when she was reaching the end of her rope, she was discouraged. She was no longer believing in what God had said. She was no longer trusting in what God had promised. She started to make plans for herself. She started to think of ways of how she can get out of the situation that she was at. It was not long when it landed her into troubles. When we go to the book of Genesis chapter 16, uh, from verses one, we see uh, uh, Sarah, Abraham's wife, talking to, 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 to her husband at the verse 15, that uh, it, it's best that you, you, you go and you take, you, you take a wife, you take my servant uh, Haggai and make a, 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 a a family out of her because the family that God has promised me, I am not seeing it. I am of age and you are also of age. When we get to the end of our ropes, we tend to want to help God. We tend to want to make plans that leaves us in trouble. But I'm here to tell you that God will never leave you stranded. God will never leave you alone. God will always be there at the end of your rope. We need more of God and less of us. We need more of God and less of our own abilities, less of our own rules. We tend to make a lot of rules when we are going through challenges. We, 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 we look at things that are not going right and we think that God is not there. God said it in his word that I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will always be by your side. All we need to do is to call on him. All we need to do is to shout like what Hannah did. Hannah decided to call on God when she was looking at situations, when she was looking at things that were not going right in her life. When she looked at the lack that she had and realized that not even my husband can give me what I want. She decided to focus on God and God came through for her. It's like we can decide today and say, Lord, I have done everything. I have gone through to the doctors. I have been to this place and this place and this place. But I want to say today, when I am reaching the end of my hope, of my, my rope, I am choosing to focus on you. I am choosing to hold on tight to your weight, to your promises, to your rules, Lord. Sarah chose to forget. She chose to make a family of her, for herself. She chose to, to, to take a, a, a hugger and say, hugger, lay with my husband. I believe that through you, I will receive the promises of God. Little did she know that God was not yet done. Little did she know that God was still working it all out for her good. Little did she know that by her helping herself to help God, she was bringing troubles in her life. It was not long 
when uh, she started to go back to Abraham and report that which uh, 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 Haggai was doing. It says there <clears throat> that, uh, 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 but Abraham, uh, the sovereign, uh, uh, Abra but Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is uh, uh, Eliezer of Damascus. Abraham was also losing hope. But always when Abraham is losing hope, who did he go back to? He went back to the Lord. He went back to the Lord time and time again. When God comes to him with promises, he chose to trust in God. He chose to believe in God. What do we do when we come to the end of our rope? Do we act like Sarah who forgets the promises of God? Do we act like Sarah who forgets and start to make her own plans? We need to go back like Hannah did. Hannah chose to go to the Lord. She did not worry who was looking that day. She poured herself out to the Lord. She trusted the Lord the more. Uh, uh, when we have uh, 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 read, the word says that when, uh, uh, when we are at the end of our rope, blessed are we. Hmm? Who will think that when you come to the end of your rope, you are now called the blessed one? When you come to the end of your rope, you are called the blessed one. It says, when you come to the end of your rope, I'm just moving uh, uh, in between verses. Yes, it says uh, um, Matthew chapter five, verse three. You are blessed when you are at the end of your rope. And when you are there, you don't think of, you know, trying to make other plans. When you are there, you choose to, be, to stand still and allow God to be God. You choose to, 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 to remain still, to stand therefore when there is no hope, when there is nothing that you can hold on to. You choose to hold on unto the word of God. You choose to hold on unto the promises of God. His rules must matter the most when you come to the end of the rope. It does not matter what rope, what end of the rope it is. It might be in your sickness. It might be in your studies. It might be in your workplace when things are no longer working right. It might be in your children's life. We've been praying for children the whole week. Maybe you've reached the end of the rope for your child. You don't know what to do. You don't know okay, how to bring that petition to be known unto the Lord. You don't even know how to cast your child unto the hands of the Lord. I am here to reassure you today. Continue to hold on. Continue to hope. Because your answer is near. Your answer is right there. David went and prayed to the Lord in Psalms 143 verse 7. And he said, answer me quietly, quickly, Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me or I will be like those who go down to the pit. David knew that there is a secret that when I'm reaching the end of my rope, I must hold on. I must call them all to the Lord. I must ask him to come and answer me quickly. I must not be like those that falls into the pit because of doubt, because of lack of knowledge, because of not trusting in God, because of not utilizing my small mustard seed faith. Do not give up. Hold on unto the promises of God because that's where his rules met us. Hmm? The last part there says, there, with less of you, there is more of God and his rules. What are God's rules? God's rules are his weight. God's rules are his promises. Never forget them. When Joshua was going through a lot of challenges in his battlefield, he trusted and kept the word of God in his heart. He believed 
that my God will come through for me. He believed that my God will fight my battles. All I need to do is to keep his weight. All I need to do is to hold on to his promises and things will come through for me. When you are at the end of your rope, you must never lose hope. You must draw nearer and nearer to God. That's where you will get comfort. That's where you will get encouragement. When, when there are no people coming to encourage you anymore, when your friends are nowhere to be found, draw near to God. Reach out to him and touch the hem of his garment like the woman with the issue of blood did. She had gone up and down everywhere. You need to go closer to God when you are nearing the end of your rope. Hagar changed and decided to turn on, 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 on Sarah when she has now carried the promise. Until Sarah realized the mistake that she has done. When she went back to, 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 to when she went back to, 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 to Abraham and said, I, 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 I don't know what this woman is doing to me. I don't know why she's acting like this. That's when she has brought problems for herself. Instead of waiting on God, instead of trusting in God, she never believed that God will come through for her at her age. She never believed that God will come through for her because she was counting the age. She was counting that my eggs are no more. She was starting to count all the things that were against the promises of God, but she forgot the power of God. She forgot how powerful God was. She forgot to trust them all. She forgot to hold on to the word that was there in the beginning, the word that never changed. But she decided to trust on the circumstances. She decided to trust on the situations. Let us hold on fast to the word of God. Let us know that God has got plans. And let our plans be God's plans. God will not take you where his grace is never su su sufficient for you. For you. God will never make you to embark on a journey where he will leave you stranded. We saw it when the Israelites, they were stranded. They didn't wait after they've left Egypt. They were faced with the Red Sea and behind them, they were their enemies. But Moses went back and sought the face of God and said, Lord, I am here. I am stuck. It seems like there is no way out. What do I do? God never left them stranded. God provided. God made a way for them and opened up the Red Sea. Who would have thought that things will be that way? Who would have thought that their situation will change just like that? Hold on. Your situation is about to change. Continue to come to these prayer rooms. Continue to hope in the Lord and God will change everything for you. God will make things right for you. He makes a provision through himself, through his weight. In the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, it says, and my God will meet all your needs. All of them, there will be no need that he will never meet. There can never be a, a need that if you bring it to him, he will never meet. Yes, he will do it in his time. Yes, he will do it when you hold on fast, when you stand and believe in his weight. God shall supply all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. He might provide them differently, but he will do it. He might provide them differently for what, from what he had done from your friends. He might provide them differently from what he had done from your colleagues, from your family members, but he will surely do it. He will surely come through for you. Trust me in this. He says, trust me in this. I will make a way in the wilderness. Hmm? God was able to provide for Sarah and Abraham. God was able to bring that child at their 
you know, at the age of no bearing of kids. Everyone, if you look at an old person now, you know that this, this, this time, these people, they are no longer in the childbearing age. But God was able to make a way. God was able to remain steadfast on his way. God was able to do it for them. What about your situation? What about that situation that you are counting that this one is dead? My marriage is never going to survive this. My marriage is just not going to make it through this storm. Believe you me, he is a God that you will find in the middle of your storm. He is a God that you will find in the middle of your storm when you are thinking this is done. I want you to hold on to his promises. I want you to go and find a way, a relevant way, and say, Lord, even in this situation, you are going to restore. Even in this situation, you are going to do it again. I want us to go before the Lord and say, Lord, we are bringing our petitions known unto you. We are coming before your throne of grace, trusting nothing else, having nothing else to lean on but your weight, having nothing else to depend upon but you, Lord, because we know that you will come through. But we know that with you, all things are possible because his weight remain standing because his word was there in the beginning. It will never fail us. It will never fail us. Let us go before him in prayer, trusting him that he who has begun this great work in us, he will surely bring it to pass because that is what his word says. His word says when we are weak, that's when he begins to work. When we come to the end of our rope, God starts to show up. God starts to show off because he wants those dead situations so that he can bring them to life. We know the story of the bones that were scattered all over and he brought them to life. Everything was joined back together again. Yes, even your marriage that you think it is done. There is no way that things can come to life in this marriage. We have been through turmoil. We have been through uh, 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 cancelings. We have been through this and that. Believe. Only believe. And you will see God coming through. You will see God extending your rope. Eh? You will see him coming. And you thought, ha, I thought it is done with me. I thought it is finished with me. He will come through. He will come back and restore. He will come back and heal. He will come back and make that child to go the way that he is intended to go. Let us trust. I don't know what is happening in your, in your life. I don't know if your financial situation is it's, it's at its dire, but trust 